Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. My name is Tyler and this is Whispering Wild. Today um, I'm going to be showing you guys how I skin flesh and stretch beaver. If you watched in our last video, I caught this kit beaver out of a 330, out of a Belial 330 conibear and it was under uh, a culvert crossing. Um, so basically this will be an easy one to show you guys what I do just because it's small. It doesn't take as long to do everything. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, skin this guy out and get him on the stretcher board, flush him out, get him on the stretcher board, uh, and get him set up for tanning. So first thing I always do is just give the beaver a good comb over, get all that mud and dirt and uh, whatever burrs and stuff he's got out because you'll poke holes on the, on the board when you're doing that. So I'm gonna get him combed out. And what I'm actually gonna do is, just to jump ahead in the video, I'm going to um, cut off at the joints his front feet and rear feet. That way it'll just give me a jump start on the video. Um, that's always the first thing that comes off. That way when you pull your fur through, uh, you don't poke any holes. So I'll get that done. Gotta sharpen some knives and I'll see you guys over here on the bench. All right guys, so what I have here is just a knife I buy at our uh, local trapping supply uh, annual sale. This one's a Chicago Coldery 841R. I have a handful of them, they're cheap. Uh, I just really like them. Here's another one that, that I've got here. I'm not sure what the brand is on this one, but just this design. It's a good good handle, good grip. Allows you to do that. I know a lot of guys like using the, uh, the beaver knives from Dexter and all them, but I don't have one of those, so I'm gonna be using this today. Um, tip, quick tip, the work sharp, game changer, guys. You can uh, dole this blade out, give it three swipes, and it's good to go. So this is the, uh, the 20 degree knife bevel. I'll just take it in here, set it in the jig, hold it tight to that side, now we're sharp again. I'll do that a couple times if I have to, so, alright, I'm going to go ahead and get those feet cut off and uh, we'll be over here. Alright guys, get them situated here. All right, guys, so right here, got uh, his legs cut off. Like I said, I give him a quick comb down. And what I'm going to do here is I cut from the tail, center of the tail, straight up right around the vent, straight up, and then right up under the chin. So that's what we're going to do here. Normally what I'll do is, is at the base of his tail where this hair starts, I'll go ahead and insert a small slit there across it like so. Then I come up here, go in, come up right to the vent, kind of hold it. I go around it a little bit, just right around the other side of it, like this. You can even hold your knife and just actually cut right around the vent here. Just like this. Now I know everyone's got their own way of doing beaver and everything like that. And I'm gonna be doing something wrong. That's totally fine. If you got your own way, that works for you, good. This is what works for me. So anyways, around the vent here, come in right at the top. You wanna keep this a straight line, guys. Sometimes a trick, you can draw your finger up the, up the beaver. It'll, uh, just give you a reference, but nice straight line here, coming right up, right to the base of his chin right there, then split it. Step two, keep him on his back, and I'll just go ahead and start opening him up here on one side. Just like this. And you'll notice that uh, the fat on a beaver is, is quite different from uh, the fat on any other creature. This fat is super gristly and uh, it's tough. It's very tough. It's not like a raccoon. So I just keep cutting all this back here. I want to be careful not to cut the leather. 
I kind of skin or uh, flush them a little bit as I go just to make the process a little bit easier when I'm on the flushing board but just keep it nice and simple I just keep light tension with my hand keep coming around you guys can see like I'm not putting any pressure that work sharp just makes a razor blade out of this knife so I um, you want to take your knife uh, if I didn't say this before ring the tail here and you'll just keep working all this down here get them on the side like this here just this camera I don't have a cameraman today so I'm doing the best I can keep working them down here when that Belial 330 actually snapped shut on this little guy he uh, actually broke one of his teeth but so light light pressure keep working it down keep working this down here working it down working it down this is also a little bit different on a bigger beaver I mean this one you can see is going pretty quick but normally uh, at least for me it takes some time so nice thing about doing it here on the edge of this freezer I've got once I get them started I can let that hang down and get some gravity to my advantage here and I can pull it lower than what the back is at so I just get this going back here keep working down around his face up around the front here just like this keep working up around his leg here so here's his leg and I'll show you guys why we wanna cut the cut that uh, the legs off first but this area right in here all around the tail super grisly that's some pretty tough stuff so but keep working it right around here up his face here's his legs front legs same thing just working it down working it down around his legs so you can go ahead and give this a little bit of a pull there's a lot of fat here you can see right here on this line this beaver looks a little blue my other one was drying a little blue too which surprises me it's the uh, it's the new year these, these beavers should be primed up I would think but so keep working it around here that is why you want to cut your feet off first. No messing with the holes, no none of that. So that's his one foot right there. Just like that, right there, done. No holes, no nothing. Keep working this guy down. Do the same thing for there. On the other side in the back, and we're moving around to the front here. See if I can get a little better view for you. Keep working them right around here. Go ahead and uh, give them a little bit of a pull. Got some fat holding me up here. Cut that. Cut that. Man, this little guy is pretty blue. I'm surprised. I can't believe that. That's another thing about the beaver is like right here, you could if this was a coon, you could just poke your finger through right under his armpit. Beaver, that that fat is grisly. Hard to get in there. Since I'm there, bam. Popped. Done. 
So I'm gonna get him to spun and we'll keep doing that. So now our beaver spun around, he's all done. We're gonna kinda maybe do this backwards, upside down to give you guys a different perspective here. But I'm just gonna keep working that meat off of there, working that hide off of there, I mean. When you're fleshing these guys on the beam, um, you really need a sharp knife. I don't know how you could do this without a, a sharp knife. You have to carve that fat off of there. You can't really push it. So I've been looking into uh, the PVC beams. If any of you use them, uh, let me know what kind you use. I was looking at getting uh, either a 10 or 12 inch um, maybe like a schedule 40 pipe or something like that. Let me know what you guys have or if you use them, see what you think. Because the beam I have is kind of small for doing beavers. I mean, for this little guy, it'll be, it'll be good, but I caught some other beavers. If you watch in the other videos, they're, they're quite large and uh, just takes a lot of time on my little, my little beam. So, but anyways, we're gonna keep cutting this off. Keep just working this fat off here. Working this side. Keep cutting them down. So when you get to here, I kind of just follow that, that lip there, the cheek there. Same thing, I'm gonna pull them back up to this edge here, like this. Just keep working that down, working that down. Just like this. Give this a quick cut, give it a little tug. It's much easier on these little beavers, these little kits here. But that guy was happy, the farmer there. Flooding out his cornfields, he lost some of the fields this year because of these guys, so we took a couple of them out. Um, oh. You know, I've had quite a bit of comments from people, you know, especially newer guys asking like how to, <clears throat> how to get permission to beaver trap or to trap in general. A lot of time for me, what I'll do is, is I'll just be driving around town and I'll see a little farm pond or somebody's pond. There'll be a big muskrat hut out in the front of it. And I'll just go knock on the door. And a lot of times for me, I'll show them the traps I use if they want to see them. And I just talk to the people, very polite, nice and They'll, uh, they give me permission, so it's a good way to add five rats or so to your, uh, to your count for the end of the year. It's the same thing, I'm just working down here. You can see right there, I can pop it through about right here. Let's see if I can give him a tug here. Oh, there he is right there. Okay. Moving right along here. A nice fat, gristly fat right there in the back by his butt and tail. There's the hide there. Get him on the edge of this table. Keep working that off from here. There it is. Just like that. So, we got both, all four legs worked off now. So what I'll do is, 
is I'll fold this pelt back on himself like this and I'll roll him a little bit on this side and I'll get him right on the edge of the table and I'll hold him just like this and start working it off still right to his back that way now I've got his uh, the gravity helping me here back ready ladies and gentlemen I've been uh, blessed with the presence of will stick your face in there and say hi will I'm gonna go hide you. right here no, you're way down there Let's oh go. way down there all right guys we're back so like I was just saying I have him on his side here keep working this down like this Right in the back here, like I was saying before, this fat here is just super gristly and tough. So I kind of try and flesh it as I'm skinning it just because I don't want to have to deal with it on the board. And it's not that big of a deal to do right now. But you got to be careful you don't want to poke a hole either. So I'll just take an extra minute here and be gentle on that. So typically what I'm what I'm my goal is here is I'll I'll work this back half off and then I'll spin him on the table and let the gravity hold his fur down and I'll and I'll do his head. That way I'm not doing each side of his head. I'll explain to you guys in a minute exactly what I mean. But I'll get this about halfway, maybe a little bit more. Once you get right here on this back under this fat layer, it goes pretty easy. There he is. So from here, I'll just do the same thing. Flip this hide out. Just work this up. Just like so. Oh, there he is right there. So at this point, what I'll do is, is I'll spin him here. And I will let him hang right off of this right off the freezer here. That way, uh, it just gives me the angles of like I would be skinning any other critter. I just like that, it helps me not nick any holes in the head or anything like that. You can just follow it right on down. Okay, just keep working them on down. Like so. So, once you get to here, I'm above him, like I've got his ears right here. It's kind of hard to tell. You'll find there'll be a couple little bumps in their cartilage. So what I'm gonna do is, 
cut up high and right there that's his ear hole right there just that little spot right there so same thing on this side little slit right there for his ear hole that's it keep working them on down here See if I can get a better angle here with you guys. So right here's his eyeball. Remember, you just want to keep that that knife blade. I kind of keep it right on his his head there. I don't want to slip and miss some. Get the tip of my knife in there and start working it around. Get all his eyelashes, everything. I've got a little bit of tension on my hand here. There's the other eyeball. Just keep working this down and around here. There's his whiskers. Getting into around his nose. Now this this <laughs> Belial 330 banged him up pretty good in the in the head. So there's his nose right there. Done. Here it is, guys. Here's your beaver. Here's your beaver pelt. Nice little guy. Really nice little guy. So the next step here. I'm going to give him one more good comb down like this. And I will see you guys on the flushing board. All right, guys. Big thing, I always clean my board off, my flushing beam. Get them cleaned off nice. So, got this beaver on. Here's his head. There's his tail. So, a couple things. First off. For before to answer all the questions that I might get, this is a Weeby Knives uh, Pro. This is a real sharp edge here. This is a duller edge. This, I mean, it's still pretty sharp, but uh, what I'm going to do is I push right here into my hip, keep my knife basically pretty flat on the beam, and I'm just going to carve this down. This is why you need a sharp knife. So. This isn't much pressure here. I'm just gonna get this started. Getting it started is typically the hardest part. Just get it cut right here. This fat up top is pretty grisly and tough, so. Get it started. Keeping your knife blade on the beaver pelt like so I'll help you from cutting a hole in it so give him a little spin here here's all this cheek meat I try and get all that because I'm going to get this tanned. This is where you need to be careful.
having a sharp knife is uh, definitely handy, but you got to be careful with it. So sometimes even what I'll do is, is Sometimes what I'll do is even, uh, especially around these tight areas, I won't mess with the knife, with the flushing knife. I'll just take a uh, the knife I skinned them with and just work that off. Helps you to not cut a hole in it, like so. So up in his face here, there's some of this fat. I try and get as much of that as I can with the knife. Okay guys, so I have everything cleaned up off of uh, the shoulders here, just below it. So when, once, you have, once you have that step done, this back right here, all this fat in here, you should be able to just carve that right off. So I'm going to lean into it on my belt buckle. Just carve that right off. I'm barely putting any pressure on my beam right now. This is just where a sharp knife comes into hand. Just work that fat down, that meat. As soon as you start getting down to where that side of his body is and the belly, it gets a lot thinner there. And a lot of that fat right there, you should be able to push. Hook his arm on there like this. All this right here, you can push right off. Just like that. He had a little nick there. See, I just, just barely poked it. rid of some of this fat here. Spin them. I'm just going to keep working that on down. This is where combing them out too makes a good, uh, makes your job a little bit easier. You don't want to catch any burrs and tear a big old hole in them. Pull them up. I'm just going to keep working that down. Just like so. And I'm trying to keep that knife flat on that beam too. That'll help avoid you poking any holes, tearing any holes, anything like that. So if you guys have been watching the uh, 
the first series here. Leave a comment down below if you want to see anything specific. Really appreciate that. Help us get uh, some feedback from you guys on what you like, what you don't like. Back on this back here. Keep shaving that on down. You guys got a pretty good glare there. Let's see if I move this board a little bit, help me cover that glare up. There we go. When you have some fat that's uh, chilled, it, it comes off pretty good. If you do your beavers a little bit cold. Keeping your knife clean. You can see right here, that's where that trap had them. So we're approaching the the leg, the rear leg there. So we'll flip them. Work down this side. Now, as you guys can tell by now, I'm no, uh, <clears throat> I'm no speed flusher here. The thing that will help you a lot doing a beaver is a clamp. Uh, I don't have one here, but you could clamp it and that'll help you when you're flushing them, keep them on the board and stuff, but I unfortunately don't have one here. I'm at Will's house. Be careful sometimes around those those trap marks. 
The fur is a little bit calloused and raw there, where the hide is, the leather. <clears throat> You can tell uh, I have to move him a lot. He's falling over the place. I think that's where a a bigger PVC beam maybe would come in handy. I don't know if you guys have experience. I know I said something before about him, but leave a comment down below for me. So I wanna. I think I wanna make one. I'd like to try it out. Make one with some interchangeable. Uh, interchangeable dimensions that way you could have one for fox raccoon mink muskrat whatever the case is but i'm just going to keep working them down as you can see here on that belly side you can push all this here just nice and careful the fat just rolls right off of them I'm kind of glad I caught this kit just for the, the sake of this video. You know, I'm no fast skinner, flesher or something, so it's good that I can just walk you guys through this without being overwhelmed with too much of it. This will be a nice beaver to get tanned up. You can see, I don't know why. You guys know why? It's still blue in there. I, I mean, I guess he's just not prime or the beaver's normally... Uh, Stay pretty blue in there. I don't know. I don't have a ton of experience with the beaver uh, pelts and stuff. So this is just what I learned. My neighbor James helped me out quite a bit. My first year trapping beavers. That's a big thing, guys. If you know anybody that traps or has been trapping for a while, reach out, ask some questions. I guarantee you, most of them would be more than willing to take them, take you on their line. Or at least uh, give you some tips and tricks in the shed to uh, put up a better grade fur. You know, especially in this market now, a better grade might get you an extra buck or two, you know. Another good guy to check out would be uh, Coon Creek Outdoors. I've always watched his videos. His stuff's really good. He's a good trapper. So, anyways, I'm just gonna keep working this down. As you can see, I'm getting close to that leg there. You guys can see that fat just rolls right off on the underside. Sometimes if you get lucky, you want to be nice and careful, but you can sometimes push right over that leg. If it's a big beaver, you can't really do that, but on these little kits, you can get away with it sometimes. So that fat under his arms or his rear legs there, that's super grisly stuff. But it's you got to be careful because right on his underside, it's very thin leather. But on top, it's very, very grisly. Big thing is you really want to keep this beam fat free because uh, you don't want to get that on your leather.
going to work this right off of them here. Okay, keep moving them around here. Right in here, that's where it gets real, real grisly. And sometimes you're better just to play it safe, grab your knife up in here and just work this off this way. Once you get it started, you might be able to get a hand on it and pull it up off of them like that. Just like that. Grab my knife again. A little bit of fat right there. You can pull that. You'll know when you get back to that, on, but right around the tail, that area is very, very difficult for the most part. That's where you can tear holes, is around, around that area, if you're not careful. Give them a spin here. Get them squared up on my beam. Here's this gristly fat. This is stuff is nasty up here to get off. Very thick. Like this is absolutely where you need a sharp knife. I'm just going to keep working it off of them towards the center there. Oop. that nasty nasty gristle is sometimes it's easier just to uh, I'm gonna cut that right there there we go keeping that knife right on the beam there that'll do it for you okay Still got some stuff right here. Get my knife cleaned off and I'm just gonna go ahead and carve this right off. Oop. Sometimes a little bit scary because this fat here gives the sound of uh, like you're cutting the leather. It's kind of like a distinct sound. It sounds like you could be cutting the leather, the leather so you just have to be careful and pay attention here. Especially because it's like, it's a harder fat. I 
I doubt you guys could hear that difference, but. working this up to that other leg grab this stuff here cut this off get his leg up here once again a lot of this stuff right here you can just push Sometimes right over that leg. And that fat will come right on off there. get his leg hooked on there clean all this up this stuff comes right off on this underside here as you can see Okay, one more spin, a little bit of fat still up here on the top side. Should be able to push some of that off. This is where keeping your beam, once again, you want to keep that fur clean. Get him flipped, there's some fat right here. Have to carve that off more of that gristly stuff get him spun again straighten him out of my beam this stuff is nasty here guys right around his legs this is a lot of time where I'll cut a hole in them I'm trying to work this stuff off Same thing, you can take a knife too, sometimes that helps. Get them on your beam. Can't see with that light. You can just carve this off with your knife. Just like this. Last little bit right there. There. So, one more time on this underside right here. One last little push around, just to clean that up. That last little bit there. If you miss a little bit, guys, it's okay on this 
lighter fat under the arms and stuff, it'll uh, typically it'll it'll melt off. But here we go back into this grisly fat here. And that's about it. You can clean up these edges here where this gristle is. Like that, but for the most part, guys, he's about to be a done beaver. Get that last little bit there. There we go. A little bit of fat right there I missed, right around the arm. Just a wee bit right there. Might stay there because I ain't getting that off. Okay, guys. He's still blue, explain that to me. I don't know why. Kinda bothers me. But I don't know. So, all right. So here's our finished beaver. Big trap mark right there. But uh, he's a real nice one. He's pretty dark, but uh, I'm gonna fold him up. I got another board at my house. I'm gonna bring him home and I'll show you boarding him there. So we'll see you guys over there. Thank you. Thanks for watching. All right, guys, so we're back at my house here. I've got this beaver all folded up here. I just pulled this other one off of the uh, off the board here. Kind of get him stretched out a little bit, centered up. He's definitely going to be probably on the smaller side, if I had to guess. I'm gonna start him on the second line here and see what that looks like. Now I do wanna say, one thing to keep in mind guys is these lines are not necessarily guides that you have to follow. You can be in between them if that's what the beaver calls for. The biggest thing is you just do not wanna overstretch your beaver. So I'm gonna start on either end, either end here. And a uh, big thing I want to say here, guys, is I know that everyone has their own way of doing this. I know people are going to be telling me I'm doing it wrong. That's totally fine, but this is how I do it. And it's worked really good for me, so with that out of the way, we'll just get this started here. Um... If you're wondering what nails I use, these are um, 6D uh, inch and 7 a sinker nails. They're basically the size of a trim nail with a bigger head on them. If you want to see what they look like, this is the box here. That's what they are. They work really good. They're, they kind of have like a, it's a vinyl coating I think is what they're called so they go in easier. Um, they actually work very well. So as I can tell right here, that second line is gonna to be too straight, too too tight of a stretch. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna probably go about halfway in between the first and second line. Cause I already know that one's gonna to be too much. So you just don't, these beavers sh uh, shrink a lot guys so you definitely don't want to overdo it on these otherwise you'll get some tear outs and overstretch your fur which you definitely don't want to do especially on a market like this so I do that get them all tacked 
and started. And I just work my way around. Work my way around the body here. Just to kind of get the sizing right. See where I'm at. I know uh, some people use the staple guns. That's awesome um, for me. I don't do enough beavers to justify buying that, so this is what I normally just do. Another thing is that I'm going to get all these probably tanned up, so I'm not too uh, overly concerned with that. So from here, now that I kind of got my sizing down, I always work the front portion first here. Um, I'll work this half and then I'll do the back half. So I just kind of uh, start off being fairly even with them, kind of get the, the shape lined out. By the way, guys, I'm using a three quarter inch a three quarter inch, uh, I think this might be birch or something, plywood. So just get them set. Once I get them to this stage, I'll go through every inch. Every inch is gonna get a beaver. Every inch here is gonna get a nail. Once you get them started here, it goes pretty quick. Maybe not as quick as their staple gun, but I don't know. Just kind of get them relined up here. Working this all the way around here. That one's gonna go a little bit more. Definitely don't want to overstretch these. So I know I keep saying that, but hey, you need to be. Uh, you just need to be careful. Now these, these lips here, a lot of guys cut them off. Uh, at this point, I'm gonna leave that because uh, like I said, I'm getting these tanned. So, I don't know if they make a difference or not, but I'm gonna leave it. So now, goes pretty quick and these nails guys actually they actually are really nice much better than like a finished nail I think just with that bigger head so I'm at this point here I'm just gonna come around them kind of do the same thing here just get these dots connected Get them kind of set up again, and then kind of uh, my spacing out. And then I'm just going to keep keep coming around with the same same thing, just like this. Keep working them right on around. Getting a little big there. I'm 
kind of going out of shape right there, so I gotta fix that. Okay, here we go. Keep bringing them on around. Like so. Okay. A big thing guys, when you put these on the board, you wanna make sure you keep them dry. Okay, so our beaver's boarded now. You can see this, how loose he is. That's exactly what you want. You do not want this beaver. I mean, this is a little bit on the looser side, but that's okay. They're gonna shrink right up. You want these to be loose. Okay, so with the legs. What I do is kind of get them stretched out a little bit. I tack one here. Get that fur touched in there and tack one there, guys. I'll tack one in the center. I just bring it over. Oops. And just cover that. You don't want to be overlapping too much because it'll rot, it won't dry. So just a little bit. Now I know some guys will, you know, there's a couple different tips and tricks you can do. You can be real careful and tuck those in, tuck the extra hairs that stick out in and stuff. Like I said, I'm gonna be tanning this stuff, so for myself, um, I'm not too worried about it. So, there's your beaver. Yeah. Alright guys, there's your boarded beaver. Uh, skinned and fleshed and boarded. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I sure did, uh, doing it. I kind of like doing these first shed videos, but, uh, Anyways, we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. And like I said before, leave a comment down below with what you guys want to see. Us in the first shed, us setting traps, whatever it is. I uh, appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you. Thanks.